but also I here I am in the, in the land of the sacred juniper tree, which I love. I love the smell of it, and I love sitting uh, amongst the juniper trees. Just beautiful. And there are some other um, evergreens here too. I wonder if this is a pinion pine. Don't laugh. I'm not sure. <laughs> Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I'm of the stars and I'm sitting here in a beautiful juniper forest. Pretty high elevation and the first snows have already come and melted. And here I'm looking at the cactus plants. They're sort of, um, I guess they're in a hibernate and winter state. Kind of cool. Before they were very um, bright purple and kind of full of um, water. And now they're sort of dried up and dormant and uh, they're just waiting out the winter, I think. I'll show you. See, this is a cactus plant, a very small one at my feet here. And um just looks kind of dried up a little and like like it's it's withdrawing its prana, its life force, and just getting ready for the long, hard winter. And it looks to me like it's ready to survive, you know. It's got its um its spines ready to prevent it from being eaten by the deer and the and the other the elk and whatever else is here. And it's just it's been here for a long time, and it's just determined to stay and to flourish, which is a pretty cool attribute, I think. It's a good attribute for us right now, because the clearing of humankind is starting in earnest, and things are a little bit tough, and they're no tougher than what we can handle, that's for sure, just like this little cactus can handle the oncoming winter. So, I just thought I'd talk a minute about some energies that are leaving Earth right now. And a little bit about how I experienced those energies in my childhood amongst the people around um, my geographic area. I think uh, in the 1950s in the United States there was a certain energy. Um, uh, the kind of energy that has to do with power and status and the ruling class and uh, people that are perceived to be disempowered uh, like children and women and people of lower uh, socioeconomic status. So basically uh, what that leaves is what has been much talked about in the history books is the uh, the white ruling elite, the white male ruling elite. I know you've heard of this. And uh, it applies cross-culturally to many cultural uh, groups because um, there will be a ruling elite uh, that's well-defined in the subconscious minds of the people of every culture. So this is just the root one example of many ruling elites, you see. And, and the rules that, that young white men learned in those days, in the 1950s, was something to the effect that, yes, they had the instinct to fight and to kill and to rape and like that. Um, and yes, that it was all right to do that as long as they stuck to people who were disempowered. And the rationale behind that was, first, that they had this urge and that sometimes they needed to express it, this urge to kill. And, and um, secondly, practically speaking, that society didn't really care that much about the disempowered, the children, the women, the people of lower socioeconomic status, you see. Society didn't care enough, that was the way the story went, to, to prosecute the ruling elite for, uh, for murder and rape and like that. And so it was a very uh, practical way of, of, of saying, of, of reconstruing 
the Old Testament uh, commandment, thou shalt not kill, you see. What it was was, pragmatically speaking, thou shalt not kill another uh, white male person of the ruling elite. And aside from that, there were hushed uh, stories in my childhood of men who did just what we're talking about, who, who for instance, um, were sitting around, even in my own town, uh, uh, I think Bob Dylan wrote, wrote a song about it, a judge and a bunch of ruling elite men in my hometown, which is very small, who were being served uh, liquor, who probably were, you know, over the limit in liquor, and they, and they were at cards or like that, and they were being served liquor by a, by a black woman, African-American woman, and for no reason the judge caned the woman to death, just, just according to those rules we just talked about. And then I think Bob Dylan wrote a song about that. I'll see if I can find it for you. <laughs> so, um, so, so basically, as a child in the 50s, the thing that I learned is that the white male uh, elite could do just about what they wanted, and that's a pretty scary thing for a child to learn, don't you think? As I was getting older, when I reached adulthood, started filtering in, probably through the Supreme Court, just a notion that, that women and children and that... Um, the, the people who had less money uh, had rights, you know. Um, had the right, had the rights that, for instance, to equal pay for women and for protection and child care services for children, and that and that um, poor people had the right to representation in court and like that. And although the system is not perfect today, after all these years, the system has changed some, and so. In the large cities, amongst educated people, you will find the notion, all these revised notions, that in fact the disempowered do have rights, you see. So, um, and, and this is much closer to the ideal of Christ consciousness than the thing that I, I was dealing with in my, my child, very early childhood in the 1950s. It's, it's much more in tune with universal love and Christ consciousness. And so, but having been in the country all summer long, the thing that I found out is that there are uh, amongst, especially amongst the people my age and older, there are a number of men who, who in their childhood uh, education learned in the school of hard knocks or through their parents that in fact they did have these rights to kill uh, the disempowered and that still hold by them, you see. And uh, so my own attitude towards all that has always been one of recoiling in shock and horror and dismay and just objecting to that. You see, I have um, um, this energy stream is very difficult for me to deal with. And so, I, so the ideal the Christ consciousness ideal is not to judge, not to blame, and not to, not to act in a cause and effect way against people whose values are different from our own. You see, and so uh, just lately, I was listening um, on the Claire Plain. I was listening to another like attempted murder. This one was in a Walmart parking lot at 2 a.m. It's just a couple of days ago. And, you know, as usual, I jumped on the, oh, please don't, or Charlie Horse thing that I do. But another woman chimed in, and she was much more with it than I was. She, she, the way she said was just full of love and kindness and sweetness. And she said, in such a way, so accepting, so sweet, so kind towards this person, that, in fact, everything changed because of the way that she behaved. And that taught me a very good lesson about the lifting and clearing of energies and the transforming of energies. It's simply to, to understand that other people's points of view are diametrically opposed to my own. And to accept 
that in their world, the killing of the weak and the powerless is perfectly all right. I know it's, it's very difficult to do. But you see, there's a difference in stance, a difference in stance between that of transforming energy for new earth and that of law enforcement. Law enforcement deals with justice and with cause and effect and with um, preventing uh, these sorts of actions that injure the public good. And so we can safely leave uh, the, what we would call the restraint of this kind of energy to law enforcement because that, that is what they do so well, uh, so beautifully. As in ages past, that will be taken care of by law enforcement. And we can set that aside and not be concerned and not worry about when it will happen that, that the energy will stop, but instead just accept and love and transform all humankind on earth. So I'm working on that right now. I do think it's important that we, um, that we optimize our timelines whenever we feel physically threatened, you know. It's very important to stay in form and to, and to keep our bodies safe, despite the fact that all of this mental chaos seems to be arising more and more frequently these days when there are solar events such as coronal mass ejections and so forth. So, um, so more and more people are awakening and arising and uh, shaking off their dark tangles and their... Um, their samskaras and moving into the light and so we can help them do that um, by doing as this, this lady taught me by total acceptance and kindness and sweetness and so uh, that's my practice right now I just thought I'd tell you and that because I was taught that because that other person did that that all this great energy has has come into earth in the last week and, and all of that um Thou shalt not kill modification. Thou shalt not kill if the person is as powerful as you are. <laughs> it seems to be um, seems to be resolving now into a simple rule. Thou shalt not kill. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Those kinds of rules. So it's a wonderful day. It's been a hard it's been a hard thing for me to, to deal with, but God has sent people to earth who can deal with it and who did. So God bless them. God bless you all. Till next we meet.